everyone, it's Preeta from Pageant Professors. Today I want to go over just kind of a quick Foundation 101 tutorial. I know that a lot of you have had questions about what type of foundation or makeup to use uh, during your pageant weekend, whether it's on stage or for the interview. So I'm going to kind of go over some of your options, things to consider when you are buying your foundation or looking for the right one, and uh, go over kind of what you need to know before you make that investment. So the first thing I want to start with is when it comes to foundation, it's really important to kind of invest in a good quality foundation. I know that we've all seen uh, makeup at Walgreens and drugstores and sometimes those work really well, but for the most part you should expect to spend um, at least $10 on a good foundation. That's on the cheaper end. Uh, if you're looking for a middle of the line, they can run the gamut. <clears throat> a good foundation, something like Makeup Forever, can run about 50 bucks, which I know is not in everyone's budget. Um, but check out something like MAC. I think MAC has some good foundations that are about between $20 to $30 that will give you a good base. But the reason a foundation is so important is literally it is the foundation for the rest of your makeup. So where you can find a cheap mascara and eyeshadows and lipsticks and blush at a drugstore, a foundation is really going to uh, do a lot for you in terms of evening out your skin tone, concealing areas that you want to conceal, and you also want to make sure it's a good quality so it doesn't break you out or negatively impact your skin. So expect that kind of upfront, uh, if you have to splurge in one area of your makeup arsenal, it's going to be uh, the foundation. Now another part that you have to consider when finding the right foundation is finding a color that matches you. And this is another reason why sometimes finding the great foundation at a drugstore is difficult because drugstores don't often have testers. And it's really important that you're able to test out your foundation. So if you do buy it from a drugstore, make sure that you have the receipt and are able to return it if the color doesn't match because uh, this is an example of a drugstore foundation. They have the color kind of on this print here. Uh, but you know, it doesn't always really reflect exactly the color that's inside and it's really, the color is the most important part of your foundation. Uh, and you want to find something that matches your skin perfectly. I know for a lot of times, uh, you know, if you want to make yourself look more tan, you might want to opt for a darker color. If you want to make your skin look more fair, you might be opting for a lighter color. But when it comes to pageant makeup, you're going to have to contour and um, define your, your face a lot more. So for that, I would really just stick with a color that matches you perfectly because all of the other stuff that you're going to put on your face after it will alter, uh, all alter your skin tone kind of the way you want. But for the foundation, you really need it to match. If you're unsure about how to match your skin tone, you're going to want to look at it in a couple of different lights. You're also going to, a lot of people have a habit of testing kind of on the back of their hand to see if the color matches, uh, but you're going to find that really what you want to do is you're going to want to take a swab of it and go from basically right up here on your cheekbone down to right beneath your jawline. Um, this is the area that people have the most discoloration, so if there's any type of spots or acne marks or whatever, also times your, your neck might be a little darker or lighter than your face. So if you kind of do this range to check out just kind of a, a streak almost um, of it, you're going to be able to get the closest match. You're also going to look at it under the lights of um, maybe a store or wherever you are, and then maybe step outside into the natural daylight and take a look at that. If you have a camera on you, an iPhone or, or any camera with a flash, that's also going to help because you want to make sure that even though it looks one way when it's on, you're going to be on stage, people are going to be taking pictures, you want to make sure it doesn't flash out, which means when the flash hits it, it doesn't get completely whited out and, um, and just kind of white out your face. You don't want that. So those are a couple ways to check the color. Uh, the thing about MAC, like I mentioned earlier, that's really great is everybody's skin tone has uh, undertones in different colors. So some people might have more reddish or pink undertones. I have uh, more yellow or orange undertones. Really just depends on your skin type and professional grade makeup like MAC will have makeup that has, for example, this one is an NC37, uh, which means it's got the C on it, means it's, uh, it's got the yellowish color in it. Uh, it's cool. And W, which is another color they have, which is natural warm. Uh, it's going to have a little more red to it. But really, um, using those colors, it's going to get you the best match instead of just finding something that's light, medium, dark. 
Any makeup that has a scale of light, medium, dark is probably not gonna fit you because let's be honest, you can get three of your friends together right now and none of you are gonna fit exactly perfectly into one of those shades. So find something that has a big range. If you're looking at the drugstore brands, uh, I think Matchmaster or something, I'll have to look up the name. There is one that's supposed to be really well, a really good that has a big range of colors, but that's what you should be looking for as a kind of telltale sign about how good it's gonna be. The next thing you're gonna look for when finding the perfect foundation is what formula it comes in. Some common formulas that you might have seen are something like oil-free or hydrating. Um, long wear is another one you'll see popular. Uh, but those are really kind of telltale signs about what it's gonna do for your skin. And depending on your skin type, you're gonna need to know that information to figure out how it's going to react to your skin when you put it on. So some key things to remember is if you were a teen or a young adult that has kind of very oily skin, acne prone skin, you're really going to want to find something that says it's oil free. Uh, you don't want anything moisturizing because if you already have oily skin and then put on something moisturizing on top of that, you are just going to be a shine fest and it's not going to look good on stage. Uh, the split, you know, the opposite end of that, if you are a Miss contestant or maybe a Ms. or Mrs. contestant that has dry skin, maybe you're competing in the winter when all of our skin can get a little bit drier, you're going to want to look for something that is more moisturizing uh, because that's really going to help keep in your moisture, not allow your skin to get dry and flaky. Long wear is great for pageant days. Um, MAC has a great long wear one, and long wear basically will have none of the moisturizing components, but it also won't really be oil free. Um, it's going to kind of just matte out your face. It, it can be good, but sometimes long wear formula, much like waterproof mascara, has some ingredients in it that can break you out. So if you are gonna opt for long wear, try using it beforehand uh, to make sure it's working for you. So another area you're gonna wanna keep an eye on when you're purchasing a foundation is uh, what type of coverage it gives you. Now this is really important because just like we've said so many times, pageant life is very different than kind of every day. So some ideas of coverage are, you know, it kind of runs the gamut from sheer to light, to medium, dark, and then something known as buildable. Now in most of our day-to-day -day lives, we like either no coverage, you know, we're very natural, or we like very sheer or light coverage. You don't want it to look cakey almost every day. But when it comes to this stage, we've said this before, you actually want really, really heavy coverage if you're a Miss contestant. If you are a teen contestant, you can go for maybe a light to medium, but you, you, you have to have makeup on because if it's something that's natural, that looks natural, uh, when you're 20 feet back on stage and the lights are hitting you and the judges are looking up, uh, you're gonna look like you're not wearing any makeup and that's not gonna look really great on stage or in pictures. So you definitely want something that has some heavier coverage. If you're not sure exactly what you're looking for or if you're a teen or if you're making this investment foundation and you want something that's gonna last you for a long time, um, I'd say go with something known as buildable coverage. Buildable coverage is kind of just what it sounds like. You build onto it. So the first layer you put on of your foundation is gonna be pretty light. Uh, and then next one is gonna be medium. And if you go in for a third layer, it's gonna be heavy. Uh, an example of buildable coverage is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. I believe this is about 27 or $29 US. Uh, but it's, it's a great buildable coverage. You can kind of start off light and even just spot areas that you need heavier coverage on but it's a good go-to. Anything that has buildable means that you're gonna be able to tailor it to your needs. So you're gonna be able to use it for the upcoming pageants and maybe beyond that. Uh, so it's a really, really good investment. Another thing you're gonna see, I know there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to foundation, uh, but trust me, you're gonna thank me when you go into the store and they ask you all these questions. Uh, but another thing is the finish of foundation. There's four kind of really popular finishes going to be a luminous finish, a uh, satin finish, matte finish, or natural finish. <clears throat> now even though there's four finish options for pageants, and pageant stays, you really only have one option <clears throat> excuse me, to pick from, and that's going to be matte. A luminous finish is going to have a little bit of sparkle and glitter to it. You don't want that on stage, it's just going to make you look shiny. A satin finish is going to do pretty much the same thing. It's got a little more of a dewy finish. You don't want that on stage at all because it's just going to look wet and sweaty. Um, and a natural finish, just like when it comes to the coverage, if it's natural on stage, it's going to look pretty much non-existent and that's not going to really look good under the light. So you're going to want to stick with a matte finish. 
If you want to add glitter on your eye uh, for your eyeshadow, maybe some glossy lips or uh, highlighted cheekbones, you can do that all after the fact. So don't worry about your skin being matte or dull. But for the base foundation, you really want something that's going to be a matte finish. Okay, so that's pretty much the uh, moving parts. Now all of these coverage and formula and finishes are going to come together into different types of foundation. Uh, there's eight major types. Uh, the most common one that you're going to run across is a liquid foundation. Um, there's lots of them. There's HD liquid. None of that really matters. But a liquid is just like it sounds. It's liquid. You can blend it in. And the reason it's kind of your best go-to is because this is the one that's going to be easiest to find the buildable coverage. Because it's so popular, you're going to find it in every formula, um, every coverage level. It's really just kind of the easiest to use throughout your competition or your pageant career. Uh, it, it's super simple. Uh, another type you're going to find is a stick foundation. I actually don't have one to show you, but a stick is basically a cream foundation, which I do have to show you. Uh, but it's basically a cream foundation that uh, it comes in almost like a roll-up stick. So if you thought of like a lipstick, instead of being a color here, it would be foundation. And here's an example of some stick foundation or some cream foundations, but they're just a lot thicker. Um, they're sometimes harder to blend. They're good if you have maybe not so troubled skin and you just want to kind of spot treat so you can see that it's a lot thicker, but you have to blend it in. It doesn't blend as well as a liquid uh, and it's kind of harder to match uh, and really give an even look. They're handy to have in your purse sometimes. Uh, they're good for a teen if you've got great kind of youthful skin that doesn't have too many problem areas. You can find one. Bobbi Brown has a great cream foundation that they have in their sticks. It's the same thing. It's a little easier to blend, uh, but it just means that you're going to spot it around your face and then blend it out with a brush or a, uh, a sponge of some type. So a, a stick foundation is good. You're going to also have to set it with a powder though uh, because the stick can be a little too creamy at times. Another type that you're going to find is a mousse foundation. Now mousse is kind of popular right now, especially with the drugstore brands like Maybelline. This is Maybelline's Dream Mousse Foundation. It literally is kind of just a mousse. Uh, I don't like this one as much. I, I, they kind of, it seems to be going for the more natural look. The Maybelline one just doesn't blend well at all. I haven't seen mousse too much in the, the professional line. Uh, but it just doesn't really blend. You can see it's kind of splotchy. Uh, it's not my favorite. There's also the Revlon uh, Airbrush Mousse. This one's a little bit better, but essentially, and I'll show you this right now, it comes out like a, <laughs> like almost like a whipped cream. Uh, but it also, basically when you get rid of all the bubbles, it's just a liquid foundation. So it, it seems to be more of a trend versus something that I think is really necessary for you to go for. Um, if you're buying something like this, which is about $10, I think just stick with a liquid because that's, you know, there's more air in this can than, than product compared to something like this. So uh, that's, I, I don't think it's really necessary for the pageant stage. Uh, another one you're going to see typically, I don't have one here, but it uh, looks just like this. It's the uh, Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. You don't want anything tinted moisturizer, even if you're a teen, I know the idea that you don't want a lot of makeup on your face, I can appreciate that, but tinted moisturizers are basically just moisturizers with a tiny bit of color, and what that means is on stage, they're just going to look oily, they're not providing you with any coverage, you're almost better off not using it at all than trying to get a tinted moisturizer. Uh, I would completely stay away from that. Another one to stay away from that I actually don't have either is called the uh, mineral powder. So if you follow Bare Essentials or Bare Minerals, they have a lot of the mineral powder foundations that you kind of have to buff into your skin. Uh, anything of the mineral, mineral powders for your face is not good for stage because they naturally have some shine to them and that also is going to look just very oily and greasy on stage. You don't want that. They're not going to provide the right amount of coverage. I've seen so many girls say, I use Bare Essentials uh, every day and I love it and that's great. Uh, you can continue using it every day. Just make sure you're not wearing it on the pageant stage. It just really, really doesn't ever come out well. Another type is a powder foundation. A powder foundation is great for a teen if you're looking for something 
uh, that's going to provide some coverage but not be too cakey. Uh, MAC has their Studio Fix powder, but it does, if you're using a pressed powder, it will cover a lot uh, and provide you with some coverage to even out your skin tone, but it won't be too cakey at all. It's going to give you a little more of a dry finish. So if you do have really oily skin, make sure you're bringing um, the compact with you so you can touch up throughout the day. You also have another option of what's here, this is a Bobbi Brown, but these are uh, powder to, or cream to powder foundations. And so what they are is they start off as a cream, uh, but they will dry as a powder once you blend them onto your skin. Those are another kind of one-stop uh, option that's good for teens because you just need to put it on once and it'll finish. With all of the others, whether it's uh, the liquid foundation or the creams, you're gonna wanna set it with a powder on top, a loose or a, a pressed powder. But if you're using the cream to liquid foundation, you're not gonna need that because it's gonna automatically set. Great thing about the creams and the cream to powders is you're also gonna get a lot of that coverage that you want. So you're not gonna have to worry about the natural coverage kind of sneaking in there. It's gonna give you some good, good coverage to even out your skin tone and hide any flaws that you may want to hide. So those are kind of the basics of foundation. I know there's a lot of information here. We're also gonna to put together kind of a cheat sheet for you to take with you that'll show you exactly what you're looking for if you don't remember, because uh, there are some ones that you really do wanna stay away from that can really, really affect uh, how you look on stage from 20 feet back to the judges. So I hope you enjoyed that. I wanna hear from you guys. Go ahead and leave me a comment in the section below. Let me know if you've tried any of these formulas or types. Maybe you have a favorite pageant foundation that you love to go to, or maybe you've tried some that are awful. Whatever it is, we really, really want to hear from you, so leave a comment in the section below. Okay guys, that's it for this training video. We really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, that's awesome because we have so much more great pageant instructional content just waiting for you. In fact, we put together an awesome training course called The Secrets to Mastering Your Onstage Questions. Now the best thing about this course is it's not only going to show you how to master your onstage question, but it's also going to show you how to really step up your game during the interview portion of your competition. And we all know how important an interview is, right? Now here's the good news, is getting this training course is super simple and completely free. But you do have to be part of our exclusive email subscriber list, so you have to make sure to sign up. Now if you're watching this on YouTube, all you have to do is click the hyperlink below this video and it's going to take you back to our website where you can enter in your email address and get immediate access to the course. If you're watching this video on another site, make sure to go back to pageantprofessors.com and you'll be able to opt in right from the homepage. Now as always, we value your privacy, so you don't have to worry about us selling your email address or spamming you. All we're going to do is make sure that we're giving you the latest updates on the greatest pageant instruction that we have. So go ahead, sign up, and I'll see you on the other side.